afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Latasha Martin and I am your host at Career Chats. Today we have a very exciting guest that's on here with us today. But before we bring her on, what I do want to remind you of is that Career Chats is an interview forum that's designed for people to share their career journeys to encourage other people. And so if you have a desire to be a guest on Career Chats, you'll see at the bottom, you can contact us at info at Vonswai.com, and then someone from our team will connect with you about being a guest. The only criteria for you to be a guest on our career chats is that you're currently employed by someone else. This is to encourage people who are going down career paths. And so again, today's guest is unique because she brings in a different flavor talking about a topic that I'm excited about. And without further ado, I just want to go ahead and bring her on. So let's welcome our guest today, Dr. Bina, and I don't want, I'm not even going to destroy your last name. How are you, Dr. Bina? I'm doing very well. Thank you for inviting me. No problem. And I was instructed by her to call her Bina, so that is not out of disrespect. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge her credentials in the beginning because when I read her bio, I'm just fascinated by who she is. And she's an amazing woman with an amazing body of work. So let me go ahead now and do my introduction by reading her bio. And then we're going to jump right into the interview. So Dr. Bina Rapmuth hopefully I said it right, is the professor of teaching in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Buffalo. That's located in Buffalo, New York. In 2019, she was awarded the State University of New York Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Teaching. She is the director of Blockchain Think Lab at the University at Buffalo. And in the summer of 2018, she launched a four course blockchain specialization on a consortia platform for a worldwide audience. This suite of courses has been ranked number one among the best courses on blockchain technology and has enrolled more than 150,000 learners from all over the world. She has been the principal investigator on four National Science National Foundation grants and the co-investigator on six instructional innovative instructional technology grants from SUNY. She has given numerous, she has been give, given numerous invited presentations in, at prominent conferences in area of data invasive, intensive, and big data computing. She has been on the program committees and the prestigious conferences, including the High Performance Computing Conference and Special Interest Group in Computer Science Education. Bina received a, B, a BE honors from Gundi Engl Engineering College in Madrid, India, and MS in Computer Science from Wichita State University in Kansas, and a PhD in Electrical Engineering from the University at Buffalo. Now, that is such an impressive bio and resume. I'm sorry for destroying words. I always try to practice these things, but I get so nervous sometimes when I have people that have such a complex background. So welcome, 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 Bina. How are you today? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm doing very well. Thanks for inviting me. I'm really eager to uh, share my experiences with your audience. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first question. And so the first question is, if you could share with us about your own personal career journey, and you can go back as far as you would like. Okay. Um, uh, as many of you know from my name, I'm originally uh, from India. I was born and brought up in India until my undergraduate degree. I got my undergraduate degree in engineering. So um, that's something very rare for my age. I'm ancient. So at the time, there were only 1% of the students were female students. And I just went into engineering. I got a degree in engineering. And I came to this country. And when I came in, I didn't know anything about it, um, except that some university, uh, an inconspicuous Midwestern state university called Wichita State University, gave me a um, uh, in a financial aid and teaching assistantship, I went there for my master's. But my experience was fantastic. This was, um, this was in the 80s. It was a depression time. The interest rate was 17%. Yes, 17%. They wouldn't give you a credit card, but they'd give you a car, car loans at, at that time. Um, I was a student there. This, is, this was a rich place because of Learjet. You know, it was not the internet era yet, but uh, Learjet, uh, Cessna, McDonnell Douglas, Boeing. And I just want to tell people it's not the internet that did very well here. It's also the other technologies, you know. And, and the classes were held in the evening because out of the 70 people in the class, 
67 people were from the industry. Do you see what I mean? And three of us, female students who are teaching assistants, were from inside. So uh, this is one lesson for many of the universities. You have to have lessons in the evening so that the people who work during the you know, um, morning time and other time can come and take it. And this was, this was a revelation for me. Only few of us were full-time students. Have, most of them were part-time students. And then I had a fantastic time. My chairman was a woman, by the way, in the 80s. And she, when I left Wichita State University, she gave me a big hug and said, when you finish your PhD, I finished my master's there. When you finish your PhD, come back here. We will hire you. You know, I didn't even think about doing PhD at the time. But she put a thought of PhD in my mind at the time. And this is a lesson for the mentors, you know, just make sure that your students know that there are things ahead of you that you can do. And then my husband was at Buffalo. He was working at Fisher Price. Um, one more piece of data: Fisher Price has had about six, six or seven manufacturing plants here, Holland, Medina, um, Boston, and everywhere else. And now there's not even a single manufacturing plant of Fisher Price here. Only the headquarters is here, I think. And he was here, so I had to come here and I was looking for a job. <clears throat> it was a depression time, no job in the industry. And then there's one school, SUNY Brockport hired me. And I went there. Um, we were in Buffalo. It's about 60 miles. So what do we do? We pack up all our things and we took a truck and we went to a place called Batavia, which had one main street and a few shops and a couple of ch one Chinese place and one Italian place, I think Mancuso's or something. And then um, we lived there in a one bedroom apartment. I was commuting to Brockport. He was commuting to Buffalo. So don't think that it's, uh, it's all the smooth sailing that uh, um, everybody talk about. You know? so, and then the thought of Mary Edgington was in my mind. I should do my PhD. So I, I started taking courses in Buffalo, SUNY Buffalo. I don't know why I didn't do University of Rochester. So there are times when I finish teaching during the daytime, and then I'll commute in 90 all the way to Buffalo, finish a class, and go back to Batavia in the night. By the time I go back, it's 10 o'clock, right? So I have my dinners and lunches on 90. <laughs> and, the, and the flat tires and the tolls added to it, you know? So, um, I, I never, I never felt that it was, uh, you know, I, 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 I never felt bad about it. I felt good about it. That's what you should do when you're working hard and you're doing things. You know, these are things that will pay off uh, later on. So, especially for people who are studying, thinking, "Why am I doing this?" You know, just keep up with it. It will pay off in the end. And then after two years, there's an opening in SUNY Buffalo Computer Science Department, and I joined there as a lecturer and have been there ever since. It's about 30 years, OK? So like I said, many of your audience might not have been born at that time. So my, my career journey doesn't end there. Like, you know, and then I, I said, I still am keeping. I'm not at PhD. I'm still keeping that thought in my mind. I'm doing one course at a time. My union helped me with that. You know, they pay for it, you know. So I took that. And then at the same time, what happened is that my family comes in, right? I've got two kids and a PhD between the time late 80s to late 90s. So it was a very difficult time. Sometimes I go back and feel guilty of not doing this, not doing that. You know how it is, Latasha, you know. So, you know, it, but then, you know, it, it was a very difficult time because they're teaching, doing, taking care of kids, taking care of the house and doing the PhD and other things. And finally, I finished it in 97. And from 97 to 2005, I'm trying, again, teaching different things. It doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. And finally, in 2005, I get a break. I get a National Science Foundation grant. In spite of being a non-tenured faculty, you know, I get a grant. And from then on, I keep getting grants. I'm, I can tell you that I'm much better known at the at National Science Foundation than at Buffalo. I can tell you that. You know, so I, 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 I go there, you know, and I get I got a lot of grants and also SUNY. I work with a lot of people in SUNY, not in any administrative capacity. I go to conferences, meet people. It is people to people, decentralized 
you know, collaborations. You know, I talk, I know Chris, I know Lisa, I know that Lisa, I, I, you know, things like that. It is personal communication, you know, that makes, you know, just like I met you, I'll keep in touch with you. I know exactly the time I met you. Yes. You know, do you see what I mean? So I, I, I got it. And then um, more recently, I just want to point out to three things. One is this um, award that you pointed out. Uh, I'm just holding up uh, this uh, award that I got from SUNY, SUNY Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Teaching. This is the only, uh, I'm the only person in my department of 53 plus or something uh, who got it when I'm in the department. There is one more person, Dr. Rappaport, who got it in Fredonia and joined the department. But this is in the 50 years of our department, this is the only award for our department for teaching. And I, the Coursera experience is also fantastic. You introduced me with that. Uh, you know, I, I thought myself, what am I getting myself into? If some of you think, don't let go of, I mean, just do it. You know, you don't worry about the results. And I thought, you know, I, I was second guessing myself. You know, this is 17 modules, four lessons each. It's about 65 lessons and videotaped in full circle studios in downtown on four days from morning eight o'clock till five o'clock i'm standing there videotaping you know about studios you know? i do <laughs> you know? uh, and you know um i just want to recognize a, a person again you know it's not done by one person you always have people around you who support you who say who pat on your shoulders and say go ahead and amy more you know I usually have long time friends. This is a friend who sat in my class one time and nobody wanted to do my Coursera course. She said, I will manage it. I will direct it. She was wow. my, uh, and she, she sat in my one class to see what I do, how I do it. And then she took over and she was with me. She drove me to the studio. She'll bring me back. And because it's so exhausting, I know now why <laughs> Uh, actors take you know all these uh, boosting medicines and drugs and things <laughs> like that do you see what i mean yes and and, uh, and she i just want to recognize her she said go for it bina and she said you got to have the lipstick on you got to have the hair this way and she will do my hair you know she was everything from program director to makeup artist for me she'll make me eat lunch between the it was a fantastic experience don't if an opportunity arises for any one of you listening, go for it. You know, don't don't second guess yourself. You know, and then comes you know at the end of it, somebody I'm driving from an NSF appointment to Baltimore, and somebody calls me um, and says, uh, "Vina, we want you to write a book." I said, oh "My God, what am I getting myself into again?" You know, and I'm I'm driving now. Let me go to Baltimore, and then I'm taking this call because the house is full of people. I'm taking this call from a bathroom, you know, <laughs> and uh, so I'm glad that it is not video Skype call, you know, a non-video Skype call. And this person says, "You know, um, I want you to do the book," and then she told me, "You know who found you? We have a new employee, uh, my secretary, who found you," and I told her. If you find more beaners, you can keep your job. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, that's how it started the conversation. And then, uh, you know, it went on. It was a one year project. But what happened is that there's some things happened in the middle. I had to put away my writing and focus on that. And, and we all have personal issues. And this happened to me also. And so um, the book was extended and it became a um, a two-year project, but I'm really, really happy. I'm thankful to everyone, all my students. I recognize all my students. You know, I made them work. I made change. I, I made them. Everyone understands the people who I work with. You know, we work in the same frequency. If they work in the night, I stay up at night with them. You know, uh, and things like that. I work in their uh, zone. I don't work in my zone. Do you see mm -hmm. what I mean? And I thank everyone who participated in it. And I think those are the uh, achievements that came. You can see that at the end of 30 years, you know, do you see what I mean? Now, you know, at the end of 30 years, I'm, I'm, I'm having this award. I'm having this Coursera thing. By the way, it's now 160 plus, And I have a reach like Kim wow. Kardashian, 500,000. <laughs> know. Okay. <laughs> she said, like Kim Kardashian. Okay. Yeah. One of your students is here watching. Um, yeah. He said in here in the comments, he said, You're a superb professor. So yeah, I don't know. 
Yes, that's what he said. So I just wanted to know that one of your students is watching. <laughs> okay, thank you. So I, 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 I just want the lesson from my career is that it is not a straight line. It is not a straight line. There are going to be uh, times when you say you want to give up, you know, and uh, you're second guessing. You need, um, you know, um, you need to keep going. You know, the uh, rewards are at the end. You know, it, it, take it from me. You know, um, you know, uh, the little things add up and make it big, you know. So that's my career journey. There are lots of stories, side stories, but that's for another day. <laughs> I love that. And I love, you gave so many rich nuggets in that. I loved how you said when you were, like when you had to re, like live in Batavia and then commute to Buffalo and your husband's working in East Aurora, anyone who's from this area knows that was a lot of travel miles. Mm -hmm. And you said, and it wasn't bad. And think about it, back then we, I can say we, we didn't have mobile phones to keep yeah. us occupied. <laughs> We're just on the road, listening to, to the radio and hoping that we make it to our destination. Yeah. We didn't have GPS, we had maps. And so there was a lot, you know, yeah. a lot of fear that could have went into that. Yeah. And I love that you share that. And I also love how you said your journey was not straight and narrow, yeah. that you had a family and you had your priorities, it sounds like, through that process. And so you were not afraid. Now, even though I know we talked about your career journey, what people naturally probably didn't end up on is share with them again your current role in blockchain and, and tell us a little bit more about what is blockchain. Okay. And so we can understand that before we go to our next question. Okay. I'm not going to go into the technicalities. I'm just, I'm going to tell you by a simple um, word, you know, um, you know, everyone uses internet. They don't even think about the internet. And everyone is afraid of the security. How is the security of the internet? You know, many of you want HTTP, I mean, in fact, we want to have HTTPS when you go to a link other than instead of HTTP now. That the security layer is needed for the internet, um, you know, we operate on. Blockchain gives you one more layer on the internet that's for the trust, you know. In this time when we are all separated, we are all located in a decentralized world. When I say decentralized, I mean we are not um, globally, we are all globally separated, but even within a house, we are quarantined and separated and things like that. True. You know, if Latasha is talking to me because I trust her, okay, somehow we develop the trust through conversations. So blockchain provides a trust layer over the internet for application, enterprise applications to operate um, automatically to work automatically. So you can think of it as just like the security layer, a trust layer. I love all that. The, all these listeners, don't tell me that you need trust. <laughs> you, you need trust among your friends, uh, for, among your relatives, among your board members, among you know anybody, students and teachers, doctors. You know, you want to trust your doctor. If you can automate this for applications that's what blockchain provides you and i believe it's going to be there it's going to be there in your future and there are so many employment once this covid situation improves it's going to explode a lot of opportunity is going to be there and there's one role for every one of you you know so just like you have internet application ubers and abnbs and things like that newer applications are going to come in the future wait for it Yep. Yes. And one of the things you were sharing with me, because I was like, OK, I, I did. I met you at a blockchain event. Yes. event. I call myself a nerd and I just love learning about new stuff. But even that connection, a lot of people hear about Bitcoin and all this digital currency and they think it's fake or it's real. But can you just help them a little bit understand like what what it like? Why should we know about this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's a very good question, Latasha. Um, Bitcoin. I was introduced to the world by a mysterious person in around 2009 when the fight, again, this was a depression time. Things happen during depression. So uh, take take home this thought, you know, now we are all in a very bad situation. Things come out of it, innovation Ooh. come out of it, you know. So this was a very a financial crisis, 2009. Somebody said, take this Bitcoin. You, you people don't know how to operate. This currency can do well. And it's still operating. It's a cryptocurrency. It's a digital currency. You can still buy things with it, but it, it is not a mainstream currency. Okay, it's a digital currency. But what is of interest to me is that what enabled the cryptocurrency underlying layer is the blockchain. 
its main can't technical since you said you're a technical geek you know these te these many things healthcare gives rise to some technology you know um internet gave rise to uber likewise block bitcoin gave rise to blockchain you know and the blockchain just like it enabled cryptocurrency it can and my my thought and other thoughts of other people is that it can enable other application what work for money should work well for other applications yes <laughs> what was strong and robust for money should be good for applications you know it has been field tested with money why not applications you know, and a trust layer and so on so that yes. is that's what it is and i've written a book yes this is, this is a book um, i i can keep talking about it i just would like people to uh, look at the book there's an online copy <laughs> i usually put a lot of colors in a Co coursera said don't wear colors on on that video and i broke their rule and wore colors for the <laughs> videos you know i i wear a different color for each of one of my courses you know so likewise i wanted to put color they prevented me from putting color because of uh, you know it's a print book but i you know I, next time i'll throw in a lot of color you know on the e version it's colorful but more more seriously it is it is a lot anybody from k to 12 to you know, one percent of my learners in Coursera is sixty-five and over. Any demographics, if you want to learn to program, then blockchain program. Okay, I talk about it in my own words. It's not technical. It's not theoretical. It's Bina's words. Okay, the way <laughs> the way I learned it, the way I learned it, I want you to learn. I just I just express myself. This is the wisdom I got from Amy. Just do it and stand by it. And I love I that. I stand by my book. And I'm teaching from it now, and we are having such fun. Believe it or not, <laughs> we are practicing what we are, <laughs> what we are uh, preaching, and it's so such fun in that class. And uh, the hundred person, everybody wants to participate, and we say that <laughs> forty five minutes after the class. So it's. Uh, it's oh, I fun. love that. Yeah. And you can see you're passionate about it. And I do want to remind everyone on the bottom of the screen right now, there is a, a ticker going by. And if you'd like to purchase a copy of Blockchain in Action, you can click on that link. And because you've attended or you're watching this this podcast or listening to this, you'll see that there's a discount code that lasts forever. But I do want to say something. There is a privilege to being on live. So I have a few co coupon codes for some digital copies. So if you are the first, you know, three people to inbox me privately somewhere or email our team at info at I can send you a coupon code and it's good for two months. So you can read this digital copy. And I normally don't go on this path when I'm I'm doing these interviews, but I do feel because career chats and we're talking about stuff that could have employment, even in a time like this, what I love that you said, Bina, was out of any depression, you know, new stuff happens. And this is something that's been going on, but trust is really going to be something. It's something we talk about all over the place. And so I just wanted to do that sidebar. Again, the first three people to inbox me or email our team at info at Von Swy, and we'll have to look at the, the name tickers and then we'll announce that and we'll make sure you get those coupon codes. But let's go ahead and jump into the next question. And the next question is, what are a couple of things we wouldn't know Mm -hmm. about what it took for you to be successful in your own career journey. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you always need a champion in your life, you know, in many, anything that you do. Uh, the mentorship mentor is something o overused. In, <clears throat> I want to recognize Dean Liesel folks at this time, you know, who was a dean of the engineering. And I never got to, you know, I, I I don't go into anybody's room to talk about it. This was the conversation I had going down the stairs and going up the stairs of Davis Hall. You know, I told her, this is something that we can do. This is, this is an opportunity we miss, right? We can have a Zoom, but we cannot have a staircase that we walk by <laughs> and talk about, right? And the corridors of halls, you know, Zoom cannot provide us, you know, waiting room, but not the corridors and plazas and coffee rooms and water coolers. You know, this, so I, I didn't go to her to talk to her in a room on an appointment, but we went up and down the stairs a couple of times as she was going down. And I told her, this is something that we can do. That's it, right? Really? Next time. She put the money for the Coursera production. Wow. Okay. She championed this production, which is making you be known all over the world. Hello, my name is Michael. I am calling on behalf of Steve Okay. 
<laughs> that's okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, and um, okay, going back to it. So that is making you be known all over the world, you know, from Pakistan, uh, you know, anywhere. I put the names in, in my Coursera course too. So um, from Christchurch to Zagreb, Croatia, that's what I say in my <laughs> one of my talks, you know, everywhere. So you need a, going back to the loop, you need a champion. So I, th that's something I want to say, everybody. So somebody who, who recognizes your skills and champions it for success. Second thing is that I want, I, one thing you do not know is that I read. I read. Um, and I don't read like you do. I take a book. Uh, I don't read romance novels. I don't like them. Neither do I. <laughs> But I, I read technical books. You know, I Me have too. It. I'm yeah. such a nerd. I told you. Yeah. I have a 1991. For those of you who know Office, Office sitcom, <laughs> this is a picture outside Michael's office. And this is a distributed system, you know, 1991 magazine. So I read books. I don't read it in the way that you read. I just jump from place to place to place to place. place. <laughs> Multidimensional reading. You know, I read nonfiction. I read... I read Hunger Games because I Hunger Games is problem solving. You know, uh, Hunger first book. Now I don't like the last book. But, um, <laughs> okay. So uh, the first I read, read again. I can tell you scenes where she drinks the mint tea. You know, uh, to, because they don't have enough food. You know, they drink the mint tea to tell the body that you know it's end of food. No more food in the house. You know, things like that. And so I read books that move me. I read books, historical fiction, Second World War. You know, I'm reading books. I've read all of Pulitzer Prize winning books, except one, which I didn't like. And, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, so I like female. I mean, thanks to the audio books, you know, that affords many of us who are busy uh, parallel processing, you know. So um, and I I I get a lot from that. And the uh, you know the latest book I'm going to read is, a, and I won't promote anything. But anyway, so I read. You can tell all us what them. book it is. We want to know now. Okay. You said I, it. <laughs> okay. I I read all Coles and Whitehead's both books. It is fantastic. Every it's Underground Railroad and Nickel Boys. My God, I keep thinking about it. I know the names. I know the scenes. Whenever I see a street name, it moves me so much. Both of, it is a. Many of very few authors get the two Pulitzer Prize, and he got Pulitzer Prize for both these books. Wow. And I would write, really like to meet him and talk to him. <laughs> you know, so it is. It, it's uh, I, I've read those books anyway. So I read nonfiction. I read Churchill, Second World War books, and I connect. You know, the reality with the you know what happened in the book and things like that. You know, m match the. I mean, this that keeps me going when I'm not doing blockchain. You know, so I love that. And you know what I love? I think you are so right when you talk about champions. I use I'll use that word with with uh, sponsors, mm -hmm. someone who can open that door. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm just trying to connect you to the amazing people that I meet. But you say we don't have the opportunity to go to the water cooler in the coffee house. But what we do have is we have LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. so I think of LinkedIn as my way to connect with people yeah. all over the world. So I can send an inbox and say, Hey, I love to talk to you about something that you're you're working on, and it's really like through this pandemic has been a great resource. And so I would encourage you guys to doc to connect with Bina, not Dr. Bina, but Bina. Um, again, there's her LinkedIn link if you want to connect with her. She is very responsive and very active on that. So thank you so much for sharing that. And then this is the question I have. Now you are the first guest that I think lived and actually was born in another country. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how the school systems are there, but if you had an opportunity to talk to high school or younger grade school Bina, mm -hmm. what would you say to her? Like, what would you say to like say to her? Okay. Well, one of the things I would say is that be informed, you know, um, be educated. When I say be educated, I'm not talking about getting a BS degree, MS degree, PhD degree. It's simply that knowing, you know, I didn't have internet, I didn't have phone, I didn't have any of these media. I I did not educate myself, inform myself of, you know, what's the best school and things like that. I think people do that now, but it's not about school itself. It's about, it's about the environment, the civic duties, the responsibilities, what is good and what is, 
I'm not saying this is good, this is bad. It's simply you have to make a decision for myself. That's what I mean by saying informed and educated. I think I was not that. You know, I got admitted in a, one of the best schools um, in uh, in you know in India, but I said, oh, that's too far. I'm not going to go. You know, do you see what I mean? You know, yes. but I went to a local school. You know, <laughs> that happens to many of them. You know, so that that's one thing. And then second thing is that. Um, I used to worry too much. You know, my circumstances were such that I was worrying too much. What's going to happen? If, so, if something is beyond your control, don't worry about it. But if it is within your control, fight for it. You know, which I I, I think I should have done in many situations. Sec and the, <laughs> this is the most thing. <laughs> don't be afraid. You know, I I I'm not afraid of bugs, snakes. I anything. I'm the bug buster of the house. You know? <laughs> You know, of snakes and spiders and ants. You know, I don't mind. I take the ants and leave them outside by hand. But I'm afraid of people. Oh, <laughs> I really? Be, you know, I, you don't believe me, right? I used to be afraid of talking to people. You know, so I, I tell people, don't be afraid to talk. You know, if you see me on the street, if you see me in my car, again, the corridor and the things are gone. But if you see me, don't be afraid to talk. I mean, you, you think it's funny, right, Latasha? No. I, I am. I am afraid to talk to people. Even now, you know, I don't, you know, ask my department. <laughs> I'm afraid to talk to people. Wow. Uh, well, you, I'm glad uh, you talked to me. <laughs> we were just playing. I think it's because we were probably a handful of women at that blockchain event at UB when we met. Yeah. So no, we're no. drawn to each other. It was just the two of us. <laughs> but, but I, I don't think it's now. It's now, but it's uh, before. I, I, I would characterize myself as an introvert. Um, but, you know, if you talk to me anything technical, I'll go big deal, that thing. But when it is, comes to anything personal, I'm really, really cloistered. You know, I will not let go of any of my personal things. And also, just in general, talking to people, I used to be. I'm not anymore, but I'm just advising people as a you know um, high school person. Don't try, don't hesitate to approach anybody and ask a question. What are they going to say? No, they're not going to eat you up. You know, I'm telling myself. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm telling myself. You know, they don't. They're not going to eat you up. You know. That is true. And the funny thing that people don't know about me is I can speak in front of an audience of thousands. Mm -hmm. But if you put me in a social event, like a cocktail party or something, I am in the corner with you, Bina. Yeah. I am socially <laughs> awkward. And it's just really, I don't know if it's not, I don't know. So, so people never believe that about me. I'm like, no, I really am not good with that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now let me ask you this other question. What's been the biggest learning lesson in your career journey? Um, it is simply that do what you're passionate about, okay? Do what comes easy to you, what you feel good about, okay? Don't go upfield to reach something, you know? So if you're passionate about something, do that. Conversely, um, you know, um, be, passionate about, be passionate about the things that you do. Do you see what I mean? Head first, 100%, fully yes. immersed in what you are passionate about. Okay, have some passion. You know, <laughs> there are three things. Be passionate about something, you know, uh, do, um, do things that you're passionate about and achieve, uh, you'll achieve more success when you do that, you know. I think Don't that's... run against the tide, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I think that those are some really good nuggets that you share, because like I said, um, if you think about how people go through life, there's so many people that just react and they don't realize that we have so many opportunities if we just go for it. And what I also love is the fact that like you, I would, I'm interested in taking a blockchain class when I hear you so <laughs> passionate about blockchain. I don't know if anybody else like go ahead and say, yes, we all want to know about blockchain because you're so passionate about it. And so what I would like to for our closing thoughts is if you could just share again, a lot of people may have been maybe intimidated by your path or intimidated by the technical pieces that you shared. But if you had to give some closing thoughts to encourage somebody that's trying to figure out what do they want to do with their lives? And they may have a, a knack for science and math. Mm -hmm. This is for my son, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding, but it's for everybody. But like, what would be some closing thoughts about the opportunities in your field right now and that you can encourage someone else? Like, what are some of those nuggets that you'd like to share with everyone? Yeah. Um, one thing I would say is that <clears throat> there is a lot of push for STEM, but I don't want anyone to let go of the A's team arts in it too okay 
um, I wish, you know, I had learned more arts, you know, uh, when I say arts, reading, writing and communication. And also I'm going to take a lesson in graphics, you know, drawing. I enjoy putting things, pictures in my presentations and things like that. I'm going to take a formal um, lesson. That's my uh, winter vacation. So I would like you to say, besides the math, don't let go of the arts component. Okay, mm. uh, art, the reading is writing and communication are equally important. I, I learned it hard way when I'm writing, my, um, when I did my writing. The expression of what you know, even in the scientific field is very important. And, and, that, and then coming to blockchain, it's, it's an emerging technology. It's at uh, it's the, it's the frontier, you know, it's wild west. <laughs> Because it is wild, people didn't go, it didn't stop them from going west, right? Right. California is now the, you know, Silicon Valley is the capital of the tech now on the west. So I would say um, it may not happen now. It's a gradual evolution. Internet, Uber and Airbnb came 30 years after the internet was born. Likewise, this is the, it's just blossoming. You know, blockchain is just blossoming. I like B words. <laughs> buffalo, <you're> <laughs> buffalo blockchain, you know, a buffalo blockchain. Anyway, so uh, Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, it's just blossoming and there's a lot more to go, you know. Um, and there are so many opportunities. It's not just for programmers. It's simply um, blockchain enables decentralization it enables an individual you know it enables you as a as an individual not a, not just the company it, there is enterprise blockchain you can come and do things you can hold your assets and do things on blockchain you know wow. that's what I'm, i mean i may be talking a little technical there but understand that there are so many opportunities in blockchain it's not just programming it, you can you can do you can do applications you can present applications you can you can be many things on the blockchain just like internet gave you so many opportunities and so involve yourself find the role in there you know and that is you're passionate about you know it doesn't have to be programming it can be real estate it can be anything else you know one of my friends has gone into real estate rentals and that that's good you can do that right you know so yes yeah so it, it, nobody's preventing you from what you're passionate about go for it and blockchain is going to be there present in that world i'm i'm sure of that yeah well, thank you so much. And I, like I said, I'm so thrilled that you were able to find time to come on and be interviewed. I know that there's going to be so many people on the replay. I love that you're passionate. And I really do appreciate the last comment. So many people say STEM, they leave the STEAM and the arts out. And one of the things that I think is such a privilege, at least I, I'm so thankful for it all the time, is that I get to use both sides of my brain often. Mm -hmm. And I know most people can't. So that creative stuff, and mm -hmm. then as well as the technical but i thank you so 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 much again i'm encouraging you guys i think only you, i have one more code left um for the digital copy but if you want to get your copy of blockchain in action it's right there don't forget if you want to connect with dr bina um on linkedin there is her link uh connect with her i just like i said these are amazing people in buffalo that i met and actually one of my previous guests he was there too um so it's just awesome how when you come together and build those relationships built on trust like you said mm -hmm. what a better world this would be if more people took time to get to know people so i want to say thank you to you mm -hmm. and i'm i don't know i'm just gonna go ahead and put you back in the green room yeah. Yeah. thank you so much for inviting me i really really appreciate the opportunity to talk to your audience thank you no problem yeah. thank you thank so you. much yeah. i appreciate you so i think that was a very exciting career chat like i said it's a technical topic but what i loved about bina today is she brought that human side that passion to something that some of us might be fearful of so don't be afraid of the steam careers and things of that nature and if you have questions go ahead and grab a copy of that book and then also i just want to remind you again if you want to be a guest on career chats you can email our team at info at vonswy.com. And I just will love to have you on. I'm loving learning about people and doing these interviews. So until next week, you have a great week. Make it a good one and be passionate today. Have a good one and God bless. Bye-bye.